Hi guys, it is a gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise on Thursday, May 5th, 2016, Cinco de Mayo. It's all the clueless morons heading out to party, not probably 99% of them having no clue what Cinco de Mayo is. I'm not 100% sure even I know what it is, but anyway, I will not be out partying. At Cinco de Mayo, but I will be bringing you today's rant. And you know, Thursday I don't really have a rant. I, uh, you know, I was thinking that I was going to start a good news rant for Thursday on the mainstream media, trying uh, desperately to find some good news about the planet. Uh, and I guess depending on your point of view, some of these stories can be can, might be considered good news. I don't know. You decide for yourself. I'm just going to go down, go down the list of these stories, and uh, so there is some good news here. Come to think of it, now of course, I want to start off with, with one of the biggest stories on that. This was the number two story on the planet, and that's this wildfire up there in Fort McMurray. Is it Fort McMurray, Fort Mac, Alberta, up there by the tar sands where this entire city is uh, basically burning down and blowing up uh, as Mother Nature brings out her broom and, uh, and trying to give us a little wake-up call. That Mother Nature seeking revenge, this was the lead off of my rant yesterday, and I have to admit that it's, uh, the more I think about this, you go girl. Uh, if, if, if there is one town on, on this planet, it would be, uh, am I getting the name of this town, Fort McMurray, right? Um... Uh, where, according to this, Fort McMurray, 1,600 homes and other buildings uh, have burned, but even this news is now 12 hours old. Good God, burn, baby, burn. And in the middle of all this, we have the Christian Science Monitor uh, asking the question, this asking the question, did humans provide the tinder for massive Alberta wildfires? Did humans provide the tinder? Well, uh, Mother Nature provided the tinder for the forest that is on fire. But I guess, if counting the blowing up gas stations, Mother Nature provided the tender. Uh, Mother Nature provided the forest, what the oil sands call overburden. That is their name, the overburden. That is what Mother Nature provided, was that overburden known as the boreal forest. Humans provided the the catalyst so this should be the headline should read are humans the catalyst for massive alberta wildfires in which case the answer would be an unequivocal yes and this looks at several things namely uh climate change um Although it is still just early May, Alberta has experienced hot and dry weather conditions this, this spring that experts say contribute to wildfire risk. Yes, do you think so? This is one of these climatologists and Paul Beckwith having two great rants last night. I think anybody who doesn't think that this that that this wildfire up in the oil sands is isn't due to climate change. Pull your head out of your ass. Uh, this is UCLA wildfire expert Glenn McDonald. Quote: If you look 
at Alberta's climate tra trajectory over the late 20th century, you see that the winters and springs are becoming much warmer than they were over the 20th century. And those changing weather conditions have helped create the conditions that facilitate a wildfire like this one. Warming temperatures have particularly affected a handful of regions, including northern Alberta, home to one of the, the most evil fossil fuels projects on the planet, creating conditions that tend to produce kindling for a forest fire. And uh, so later on down the article, this is the, the good news. If, if you're looking uh, for, the, for the good news and all, and, and all of this hellfire and brimstone, the blaze is affecting the oil sands industry where several large oil producers have shut down production in the face of the blaze. And this is good old Royal Dutch Shell, uh, an oil sands mining company shut down its Canadian operation on Wednesday. This move will cost the company 250,000 barrels of oil production per day. The largest oil sands operation in Canada, Suncor Energy, has curtailed production. So uh, there you go. Uh, this is one way to shut down the tar sands. It is, it's to burn the fuckers to the ground. And, uh, and so now I guess the 100,000 people in Fort McMurray who are 100% dependent on the tar sands for their livelihoods. They live by the sword, die for, by the sword. I hope Mother Nature goes there and burns the entire son of a bitch down to the ground. Yes, I do feel sorry for the, the trees uh, that overburden, as they call it in Fort McMurray, uh, taking it in the short and curlies. Uh, but, but, but Mother Nature has a statement to make. And if you think uh, that's a statement, uh, we'll see where this headline from the Los Angeles Times today goes if you think the shit storm going on in Fort McMurray uh, is is hellfire and brimstone just wait a few years if you live in LA as we see the story San Andreas fault locked loaded and ready to roll with big earthquake experts say there you go Southern California's section of the San Andreas Fault is, quote, locked, loaded, and ready to roll, close quote, a leading earthquake scientist said Wednesday at the National Earthquake Conference in Long Beach. Uh, the San Andreas Fault is one of California's most dangerous. Yet for Southern California, the last big earthquake to strike uh, the southern San Andreas was in 1857, and it has been quiet since then. Too quiet, said Thomas Jordan, director of the Southern California Earthquake Center. Quote, quoting this Jordan fellow, the springs on the San Andreas system have been wound very, very tight, and the southern San Andreas fault in particular Looks like it is now locked, loaded, and ready to go. Here is the problem. The problem. Scientists have observed that based on the movement of tectonic plates, earthquakes should be relieving about 16 feet of accumulated plate movement every 100 years. Yet the San Andreas has not relieved this stress 
and has been building up for more than a century. And uh, when, uh, when that baby goes, when that baby goes, uh, look out, Katie, bar the door. Uh, the shit storm will hit downtown Los Angeles. Uh, of course, anyone who doesn't realize this, downtown Los Angeles probably producing as much goddamn oil as the Alberta oil sands project. And, uh, all right, moving along, uh, I don't know if, 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 if this is good news or not, there is this plane wreck. You might have heard about this plane wreck in Alaska a couple of weeks ago. Killed several people. Well, what caused the plane wreck, apparently, was a bald eagle. A bald eagle flying into the plane, knocking the airplane out of the sky, killing all on board. There was no mention in the story whether or not the eagle was killed. My guess is that it was. So see if we can connect any dots between a bald eagle knocking four people out of the sky to this story. New federal rule would permit thousands of eagle deaths. <clears throat> this is for all you people cheering on wind energy saving the planet. The Barack Obama administration is revising a federal rule that allows wind energy companies to operate high-speed turbines for up to 30 years, even if that means killing or injuring thousands of federally protected bald and golden eagles. Under the plan announced Wednesday, wind companies could kill or injure up to 4,200 bald eagles every year without any penalty. This is nearly four times the current limit. Uh, and this, this is the Fish and Wildlife Services director. Th th this is the guy uh, tasked with protecting America's wildlife, including the national symbol for the United States of America, the, the bald eagle. This, 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 listen to this guy. Who is this guy working for? Is he working for... The bald eagles, the, the, the wildlife, or is he working for big wind? Fish and Wildlife Services Director Dan Ash said the new proposal will, quote, provide a path forward, close quote. Provide a path forward for maintaining eagle populations while also spurring development of a pollution-free energy source that is intended to ease global warming. Yet a cornerstone of President Barack Obama's energy plan. There's a lot of good news in here, Ash said. <coughs> Calling the plan, quote, a great tool to work with to further conservation of two iconic species. Meaning the bald and the uh, golden uh, eagle population. Uh, Ash said as many as 500 golden eagles are eight per year are killed by collisions with wind towers, power lines, blah blah blah. 
Uh, but of course, a as they're getting ready to ramp up the this goddamn wind power, uh, you're going to see the these eagle deaths skyrocket. Um, let's see, what is David Ward, a spokesman for the American Wind Energy, says? Uh, he said wind power helps conserve eagles by mitigating climate change, a major threat to the birds. Quote, while unintentional take of eagles can occur from wind energy production, it is relatively uncommon and our industry does more than any other to find ways to reduce that small impact. Under the new proposal, wind companies will pay a $36,000 fee for a long-term permit allowing them to kill eagles. Companies would have to commit to take additional measures if they kill more eagles than estimated. Guys, from eagles to salmon. Now I guess this one might have made it, so I, I guess we can see some good news in here, depending on how you want to read this. Uh, this is the latest decision from a federal judge, plan for restoring Northwest salmon runs, not enough. Once again, a massive habitat restoration effort by the U.S. government does not do nearly enough to improve Northwest salmon runs. A federal judge ruled Thursday handing a major victory to conservationists, anglers, and others who hope to someday see four dams on the Snake River breached to make way for the fish. This is in, in a long-running lawsuit. This is U.S. District Judge Michael H. Simon in Portland, Oregon, rejected the federal government's latest plan for offsetting the damage that dams in the Columbia River Basin pose to salmon, saying it violates the Endangered Species Act and the National Environmental Policy Act. This was the fifth time that the court has invalidated the federal government's plans and rulings in the case show increasing impatience with federal agencies, including NOAA Fisheries, the Army Corps of Engineers, and the Bureau of Reclamation. Quote, these efforts, meaning by, by these half-assed efforts to protect salmon, already cost billions of dollars, yet they are failing, he wrote in his opinion. Meanwhile, he said, federal agencies have, quote, done their utmost, close quote, to avoid even considering breaching the Snake River dams, despite strong suggestions to do so by other judges before him. Jesus, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, many biologists say breaching the dams is a crucial step for bringing back populations of salmon and steelhead that were decimated when the dams blocked upriver passage to their breeding grounds, allowing the water to flow freely but also reduce its temperature, especially important in the face of global warning, warming, global warning. Quoting one of these fish huggers, we need to seriously consider a plan that retires and removes the four lower Snake River dams. 
only action on this scale has the potential to allow wild salmon to survive and recover in the light of the vivid threat they face from a warming climate. Okay, from Oregon to Arizona, several versions of this story on the mainstream media this morning. The U.S.'s only jaguar could lose its home to a copper mine. There you go. Can a mile-wide, 3,000-foot-deep, open-pit copper mine blasted into the Arizona desert coexist with the only jaguar to roam the United States? The United States Fish and Wildlife Service, the, the, the eagle killers, remember those guys, the eagle killers, think it can. The federal agency on Tuesday released its final biological opinion on the impact of the controversial proposed Rosemont mine, concluding the project would not significantly harm the jaguar and other threatened and endangered wildlife despite destroying part of their habitat. This is the Canadian company, the Canadian company Hud Bay Minerals wants to build the mine on thousands of acres next to the Coronado National Forest. I don't know if this is on public lands or not. They're saying next to the Coronado National Forest. So here we have a Canadian mining company wanting to blast this mile-wide hole into, uh, in, into the American desert. And the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service uh, handing their final biological opinion, rolling out the red carpet to the Canadian planet eaters. This is Fish and Wildlife, Sur Fish and Wildlife Spokesman Service Jeff Humphrey. Uh, due to Rosemont's commitment to offset its effects to species and habitats, we concluded that the Rosemont Mine Project will not jeopardize the continued existence of any of the 13 affected listed species. It will not adversely modify proposed or final critical habitat to the extent that it precludes recovery of species. And you can be sure that uh, Randy Seraglio from the Center for Biological Diversity blasted the opinion. Quote, this is an outrageous decision that is not supported by the agency's own scientist. So what is the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency? What, what, what have they said? Uh, the... According to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, the mine would, quote, likely adversely affect, close quote, several endangered and threatened species, including fish, frogs, and birds that live in and along local streams, which are fed by the groundwater that would be used by the mine. And the Arizona Game and Fish Department found that the project, quote, will render the northern portion of the Santa Rita Mountains virtually worthless as wildlife habitat and as a functioning ecosystem. But, uh... There we go. Uh, Jesus. Two more quick ones. Uh, 
I talked about uh, Donald Trump promising to bring coal jobs back to Appalachia and so the AP did a fact check on uh, Trump's promise. Uh, this is Trump, quote, we are going to get those miners back to work. The miners of West Virginia and Pennsylvania, which was uh, they're going to start to work again, believe me. They are going to be proud again to be miners. So that's Trump in a campaign speech. Unfortunately, here are the facts, according to Associated Press. It is clear what Trump would do to increase mining jobs. There you go. Uh, that's the problem with that. Okay, and one more. We've heard all of this about uh, the, the, all of these groups trying to get people to divest out of petroleum. Now we have palm oil protest urges boycott at London Stock Exchange. Indigenous and civil society leaders from Indonesia, Peru, Colombia, and Liberia gathered in London Wednesday to urge a boycott of firms that commit human rights violations and land seizures to cultivate palm oil. Uh, the EU is the third largest importer of palm oil. Demand for the oil has skyrocketed in recent years, but the expansion of the industry has been blamed for the destruction of tropical forests and polluting forest fires. So, signatories from the four countries called on Europeans to, quote, stop investing and funding companies and business operations that are associated directly or indirectly with human rights violations, past or present illegal land acquisitions, deforestation, and other environmental damage. Good for them. There's just one problem. Anybody on this planet who thinks some uh, indigenous rights groups showing up in front of the London Stock Exchange saying, would you please stop killing this planet, is going to do one goddamn thing to save this planet. Got one thing to tell you. Caution detected. Take precaution. And uh, if you want to look at this, latest wake-up call about palm oil, go over there to Indonesia where all of the wildfires over there are cranking up as these palm oil companies set fire to the rainforest. You know, this planet is burning. This is a wake-up call from your mother Anyway, uh, I've had just about enough of this shit, guys. So me and Sancho Panza, we're going to go camp at uh, the beach for a couple of days. We have received the horrible news that there's about 120 children heading this way for a couple of days. And Sancho Panza are going to f flee for our lives uh, to the beach for a couple of days. So... It might be a few days before you hear from me again, but for this rant, bye guys. Okay, dog, are you ready to flee for your life from the oncoming horde of little darlings invading this place in about three hours? See how interested he is. I'm out of here. Bye, guys.